type aliases define an alternative name for an existing type. You define type aliases with the type alias keyword. Type aliases are useful when you want to refer to an existing type by a name that is contextually more appropriate, such as when working with data from a specific size from an external source. Once you define a type alias, you can use the alias anywhere you might use the original name. Here, audio sample is defined as an alias for uint16. Because it is an alias, the call to audiosample.min actually calls uint16.min, which provides an initial value of zero for the max amplitude found variable. Booleans. Swift has a basic Boolean type called bool. Boolean values are referred to as logical because they can only ever be true or false. Swift provides two constant Boolean values, true and false. The types of oranges are orange and turnips are delicious have been inferred as bool from the fact that they were initialized with Boolean literal values. As with int and double above, you do not need to declare constants or variables as bool if you set them to true or false as soon as you create them. Type inference helps make Swift code more concise and readable when it initializes constants or variables with other values whose type is already known. Boolean values are particularly useful when you work with conditional statements, such as the if statement. Conditional statements, such as the if statement, are covered in more detail in control flow. Swift's type safety prevents non-Boolean values from being substituted for bool. This example reports a compile time error. However, this alternative example is valid. The result of the i equals 1 comparison is of type bool, and so the second example passes the type check. Comparisons like i equal equal 1 are discussed in basic operations. As with other examples of type safety in Swift, this approach avoids accidental errors and ensures that the intention of a particular section of code is always clear. Tuples group multiple values into a single compound value. The values within a tuple can be of any type and do not have to be of the same type as each other. In this example, 404 not found is a tuple that describes an HTTP status code. An HTTP status code is a special value returned by a web server whenever you request a web page. A status code of 404 not found is returned if you request a web page that does not exist. The 404 not found tuple groups together an int and a string to give the HTTP status code two separate values, a number and a human readable description. It can be described as a tuple of type int comma string. You can create tuples from any permutation of types and they can contain as many different types as you like. There is nothing stopping you from having a tuple of type int 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 or string bool or indeed any other permutation you require. You can decompose a tuple's contents into separate constants or variables, which you then access as usual. If you only need some of the tuple's values, ignore parts of the tuple with an underscore when you decompose the tuple. Alternatively, access the individual element values in a tuple using index numbers starting at zero. You can name the individual elements in a tuple when the tuple is defined. If you name the elements in the a tuple, you can use the element names to access the values of those elements. Tuples are particularly useful as the return values of functions. A function that tries to retrieve a web page might return the int string tuple type to describe the success or failure of the page retrieval. By returning a tuple with two distinct values, each of a different type, the function provides more useful information about its outcome than if it could only return a single value of a single type. For more information, see functions with multiple return values. Note, tuples are useful for simple groups of related values. They are not suited to the creation of complex data structures. If your data structure is likely to be more complex, model it as a class or structure rather than as a tuple. For more information, see structures and classes. I hope you find out this video useful. If you like the video, give it a like. Share it with your friends who wants to make their career in Swift. Do you have any suggestions regarding the content? Comments section is all yours. 
If you want the fourth part of this video, then do subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching.